two, one. Hey everybody, I am Omega Casting with Zero Lambda tonight. Today we are casting ZRQ versus Gurthang. These two players have never met before, so this will be a best of three. That's not true. Do it. <laughs> well, have you played on this before? Uh, Gurthang um, and I have played in Foss's Little Activity. Okay. But not in show matches, so there we go. <laughs> no. Well, in any case. But I want revenge. Or maybe he wants revenge. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. It was a long time ago. I mean, so you both just have, like, painful feelings for thinking about it. I just want to kill the other person. Okay, cool. Like, I, you know, I'll accept that. Yay, accept rivalry. That. Okay. Um, it's Protoss. Can you not have painful feelings? <laughs> <laughs> As a Protoss player... Actually, yes. I'm good at that matchup. Actually, even Protoss hate Protoss players. It's not always true. Cannon Rush? <laughs> well, I mean, that's annoying, but nobody. It's not, it doesn't happen all the time. You cannon Rush a Protoss. It is actually you, more effective on Protoss than anyone else. You see a Shimmer, and immediately, even without losing a unit, GG. That's PvP for you. <laughs> what? I mean, no. We've had nightmares about Dark Templar better than everybody at this point. <laughs> okay, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> now, in any case, uh, please let us know what race you play in StarCraft 2, what league you're in, and if you're unranked, give, your, give an estimate. As well as what region you commonly play on, and what's your favorite arcade map? Bam! Question. Oh. <laughs> Hard one, yes. He wasn't ready. Oh, no. <laughs> Alright, who wants to start? Not me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Oh. Well, whoever figures that out first can go. <laughs> okay, okay, I think I got something. Well, okay, so, um, I'm an unranked Terran from NA, and estimate of rank I have no clue since no comparison. But I can answer the other question. How's, uh, Zero Epsilon for an arcade game. Huh? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyone remember Zero Epsilon? Zero. Epsilon Zero? Mm -hmm. You mean Zero's map or. Is that what it's called? Epsilon something. Oh. That, that actually may be my map, yeah. I myself have not <laughs> actually looked at it in quite a while. <laughs> Yeah, that is. It, look, you know what? I'll look up the name now for another. It's, it's still functional map, by the way. Oh, it still works. We played it the other night. I just wow. Forgotten epsilon z dash three three two zero. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Right. Is the four numbers reference to something? No, it's not. I, actually, not. I just randomly picked those out of the air, and my cousin was like, "You know, that's your name, right?" And I went, "What? Oh." oh. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Forgotten that. <laughs> so yeah, a little little Easter egg accidentally there. But, uh... Okay. Well, in any case. Uh... But thank you, ZRQ. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's nice of you to do that. Um... Just so we know we all remember. Still remember. Okay, your thing. <laughs> all right. I'm a Protoss player. I play on NA. Ranked gold. And I'm going to sound like a real tryhard here, but I don't play arcade games. Oh, then come by Saturday next week. <laughs> That's fair. Art style. Like, literally the last time I, I ventured into the arcade was for last year's Faustival. Whoa! That's and not even that bad. then, I think I was playing on either a mono battle map or... They count, but Even it's if not they're, like... if they're not... I don't care if it's not a complete revision of StarCraft. It can... It could be, like, in the league, for all I care. <laughs> so if you have... If you have, if you have something from that that you like, it's, it's fine to throw out there. I do like mono battles. It doesn't matter what map, though. Good. There yeah. you go. I completely awesome. agree with that. Those are fun. I'll be at a little taxing on my computer. I have to turn down my graphics settings when I play on those. Too many people. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, all right, then with that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to uh, map vetoes for this season's map pool. We have Expedition Lost, Overgrowth, Secret Spring, Bonnie Research Station, Catalina, Deadwing, and Inferno pools. In order to decide uh, the order of maps for this evening for this best of three, I would like you both to send me rock, paper, scissors, 
in uh, StarCraft 2 in a PM. So you wins, and whoever wins gets to choose whether they veto first or second. Okay, I think this is how you do it. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, is there two set for a while? Tied with paper. Go, go again. Okay, tie it again. Go again. <laughs> Zuku just like sent me a a bunch of letters, and he's like sent me like six turns worth. <laughs> you tie it again. <laughs> what? Do I just keep picking what he's already chosen? Yes. God, it's yes. amazing. <laughs> so who's the psychic race now? Tie it again. Seriously? I wonder if Zuku's actually gonna have to pick another one. Let's see. That's four ties. I don't even know how many I submitted. Uh, you submitted six, but we don't need to go any further. It is rock for ZRQ and paper for Earthang. Oh! So, Earthang, would you like to veto first or second? I will veto first. Okay. I will veto Catalina. I will pick Catalina. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Catalina's gone. Nice veto. Dead wing. Okay. Mm, the opposite of the last match. Bird. Yep, all the new ones. <laughs> I mean, all the old maps are gone. Mm, and last. Uh, Secret Springs. Secret Springs it is. That leaves us with Expedition Lost, Lani Research Station, and Inferno Pools. What would you like to play on first, Kurt Thing? Um, Inferno Pools. Okay. And second, Zerkia. Between Vanny and Expedition Lost? Mm -hmm. Oh, Vanny. Hi, Ghost. Vanny, it is. That'll make Expedition Lost our third one. And it uh, gives us our order, and everything is set up for us to get started. So I'd like to wish you both good luck. And we will see you after the matches. Again, a reminder, as always, that. Coming back from the post-game interview, we ask that the winner does so. The loser has the option of doing this. So if you want to come back, don't wait for us. Just pop in back into the into the Skype. Until the Skype. It's not like I've never used it before. Oh, oh, oh. Watch my mouth out later. Anyway, <laughs> uh, good luck, guys. <laughs> Okay. Into the Skype. Into the Skypes. Yes. The Skypes. What's going on, Covert? Shout out to Morning Dumps. <laughs> Players are immediately ready, yelling at me to get started. So I'm like, we'll get started. Like, go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Five seconds. It's <laughs> cool. This should be good. These guys, uh, fresh meat. Okay, so these two players, yeah, they've not played in show matches against each other, as I so tried to say earlier. But we're both pretty familiar with them. I actually think we are likely to see some macro games here, as both these players seem to tend toward that. Um, excite. Yes, definitely, definitely more macro oriented, these two. So it should be, should be pretty good. Uh, he's, he's already gotten a shout out there. <laughs> thanks, thanks for coming out anyway. In the bottom left part of the map, we have our blue Terran. Oh, excuse me. Blue Terran player. It is CRQ. KYVX. Can we go? And in the top left, spawning is his opponent. He's the red Protoss. It is Day Night Ladder Clan's Gur thing. Excellent. So, yeah, we were saying before. Should be pretty good. Both both players are more of the defensive variety. We're more likely to see some uh, macro games rather than quick aggression. Yeah. I mean, I think I've seen both of them try it before, so it's not like it's completely out of the question. But 
you always you always learn a little bit about a person when they've been battered by cheese. What is their response? And the response of both of these gentlemen I've noticed is to turtle up a little bit. So that's kind of kind of what I'm developing this expectation on. <laughs> Still, that said, you never know what someone's gonna do. Not really, especially on this map. Oh, yeah, it's a weird thing to say because it looks huge, but it's strange. This actually looks like one of their older maps. I used to play this offline versus the AI and uh, versus other friends. It looked... Uh, I don't remember what it's called now. It looks almost exactly like it. Uh, same layout, same way the bases are. I think the ramps... No, even the ramp is the same size. I don't know. Oh, what if it is this map? I don't think so. Dun, dun, dun. I hope not. This is silly. <laughs> Have you ever played um, that uh, one map from a really long time ago that actually had the lava mechanic on it? Yeah, you mean the one that when you join the game it set it up like a custom game and you had to collect minerals instead of actually build? Yeah, I found it out the hard way. I think something like that. I found it that out the map hard way. is one of the only ways to get the achievement for beating four insane AI. Oh, it's the only way? One of the only ways, like one of the easiest ways, because it doesn't know how to deal with the lob mechanic very well, so you just build Reapers. Because <laughs> <laughs> they, they all get trapped in one base because they can't really expand very correctly. So you just run around the map and blow up everything. <laughs> oh my goodness. Not to say that I've done this myself, but at one point I was like, how do you do this? So I started looking up tactics, and that was how they recommended it. It's like, load the specific map, then do this, because if you try to do anything else, it will rip you to shreds. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's awesome. No, I never thought about looking that up. Of course, that sounds about as frustrating as the end of Wings. Now that was frustrating. Uh, it took me like three months. Three months. I would sit down every single day and make like four or five attempts before I get pissed off and give up. I've heard that having the select all army units button actually helps a ton for the Terran campaign. <laughs> <laughs> which I find funny on the one hand and not on the other because I'm like, mm, yeah <laughs> I can see how that would help it makes it's way the... too much sense with all those marines yeah, if you think about it it's technically the only thing from Heart of the Swarm that affects Wings of Liberty <laughs> it's just a UI change oh, look at that, shout out to Anti-Citizen he's listening to us on the radio technically Ooh. gonna have to give him a play-by-play -play here <laughs> Ah, uh, well, along those lines, it uh, seems like Gurthang is building up his uh, base production a little bit. We have... Is that it? I, I hate WCS 2.0. Refermalize myself. We have three game... looks like three game blink, so... Rather than a more macro-oriented play, looks like we have a, a one base aggression play into an expansion. Of that's course. Developing here. Meanwhile, ZRQ is being ZRQ. He's got a bunker. He's got natural. He's got Marines coming out to get ready to go into the bunker. He's got a reactor. He's getting more barracks. I know what you want from him. This is what he does every game. <laughs> <laughs> and it works extremely well. Extremely well. Oh, yeah. Reaper going to hop up in the base here. He's going to check out what's going on. So if you watch this later, ZRQ, that's not a, compl that's not a complaint. <laughs> we love just, you, buddy. I am rolling with the flow of my words. Don't take them too seriously. <laughs> So yeah, Reaper was taken out not before he did spy the Twilight Council building. So okay. Did, did he... I don't know. Does he know what's coming? Three Gate Blink? Uh, I, I, just seeing that there is going to tell him that he's going to have to prepare against either or try and attempt in a, uh, in a scout again or use a scan on it. I think in most cases it's probably not too difficult to get a minimal amount of detection up and mostly prepare for the Blink. But uh, when you see that, uh, you, you have to react to it. The question is actually, did he pick up on it? Like, was he looking at the map when it happened? Has he gone back to look at the base again? Because it... Wait, was it right before it finished? So all he sees is a blue orb. If yep. he didn't click on it, he's in a lot of trouble. Yep. One this more is gonna... The yeah, this is definitely going to hurt once Warp Gate comes up. Gerthang's going to get forward pylons up here. He's got his own expansion. ZRQ hasn't scouted this yet. Get him a nice economic advantage on top of the uh, nasty yeah. Blink Stalker push here. Kind of the whole point here is, is you would get up at his face with the units, start trying to do a little bit of damage, and you have the economy to fall back on top of that, but you do need to do something with this because you did it later with the Terran. Well, if you notice, you're too, going that hard into tech. this map is the worst thing to get hit by 3 gate blank on because there is a spot uh, yeah. right in your main where Seriously, if he has an observer... He's, yeah. he's straight up got army units watching that cliff. Yep, he's paying so attention. I think he knows what's coming. 
by yeah. look over here. Then again, you know, just having a solid build, I think he's going to have some detection built into it, so he's probably not too concerned about that. Um, he may be able to intuit what's going on just from the timing of the Nexus to some degree. Yep. But, yeah. Blink time, I'm going to hit here real quick. Blink so, just finished. Thing is, though, I'm not sure if he necessarily wants his unit, all, all of his units back there. Because the, the, uh, the ramp is actually very lightly defended. There's only a single bunker there. There's a single SCV. Not much in the way of repair. All Gurthang would need to do is walk forward and he could bust this down easily. Yep. He would, um, I think if he was fully cognizant of this being a blink attack, he'd probably, we'd probably be seeing a second bunker and a few more SCVs. Not to mention a few more army units forward there. But, uh, wow. Gurthang's not even going to check the front. And he's just going to stomp right up to the back door. Right Zirku's back door. totally ready for this. Oh, man, he's he's been waiting for this since the beginning of the game. And Stimpak is done in 10 seconds. So if he blinks oh. up there, he's going to be in a world yeah, of hurt. Yeah, he's not going to. He takes one look up there, and he's like, no. Changed his mind very quick. Good for him, too, because that would have been extremely painful. Yeah, he's going to be a little behind economically here for a while. Um, gosh, and this guy's always nice. Oh, over his units will warm entirely. No, look, wait, wait, no, look. Sorry, that was rude. Let us kill you. No, Billy! <laughs> But yeah, anyway, he's going to be a little bit behind economically from here, and uh, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily have expected it to be by this much, though. I, I think it's, we're seeing the side effect of Gurthang not spending his uh, resources quite correctly. He's getting a little supply blocked here, but he should actually be more or less able to keep up with them. Zerku's asking him if he want Blink. I think Gurthang would be entirely fair to reply your eyes. <laughs> And not say anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. The ZRQ, but, he's got... Oh, man, if you look at the army supply, he's got double. That supply block's pretty fatal, though. Those resources have been concerned. Yeah. Units. If he pushes forward right now, yep. uh, Gerthing's not going to really be in great shape to defend. Does he have a mothership core up? Yes, he does. Okay, so he does have that working for him. He's going to get a lot of defensive power out of the Nexus here. Building these gateways forward, I'm not sure I like this so much. Oh, if he's able to push him back toward the Nexus, it actually gives him something to kill for free. Maybe uh, pushing him a little bit back toward the Kaiser might be a little bit better, actually. But, yeah, mental note for later. Yep, Zerik, you're going to forward scout with his factory. Gurthang has been kind of pelting the front here with uh, a couple zealots at a time. Good use of minerals, but they've been taken out every time. Wasted supply in that case. And yeah, got a mar uh, marauder for free. I'll we'll actually notice here that Zerakir is moving his army out to the middle. Maybe because of those repeated attacks, he has been a little hesitant to uh, go and do anything about it. But maybe just having seen him sacrifice so many units for freeze, he's going to run forward and actually do a little poking. He's going to check for the third. Not going to see it. Shouldn't see it. Uh, I think uh, with that kind of opening, if it is going to happen, it's probably going to happen about now. He technically has the resources for it. A couple cannons going down up here. He's going to scan the high ground and see a relatively small army as well as a lot of buildings that haven't quite been finished yet. Storm is on its way, but it doesn't look like it's going to be done just uh, anywhere near in time. Mothership Core goes down. No Photon Overcharge is going to be available here, and the army of Gurthang has essentially been annihilated already. Uh, the rest of Zerio Q's forces are moving forward into the base now. There's some Warpins at the front. He's trying to get uh, units down here to actually be able to defend, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to obtain a critical mass to do it. Yep, it was absolutely brutal. Stalkers are getting wrecked by the, uh, the Marauders here. Stim Marine's going to rip down these buildings. It's, uh, it's looking pretty grim here. Uh, this <laughs> the trademark streaming of the, the units of reinforcements across the map here. Yeah, Syracuse getting supply depots down. keeping his units coming out. He's got uh, more medivacs popping out on top of this, as well as additional upgrades. And honestly, he's just entirely on top of this in ways that are kind of frightening to behold. There's a single storm that goes down and does a nice chunk to a group of Syracuse units, but they're pretty well spread out. Uh, that said, they are kind of bruised a bit from a lot of stim, so if he gets enough time to get a couple more storms, he can actually kill this army. But hmm, everything's getting healed up now, and yep. uh, he's already lost his natural. I, I think time is going to be the real killer here. Yep, super more than painful. Anything else. Because, yeah, I mean, you see that storm, you're like, okay, I guess I'm not going to go up the ramp for a while. Yep. He's packing up, though. He's going to be moving around the side. These medevacs don't even have any energy, so feedbacks aren't going to help here. Oh, does he have units in him? Yeah, he does. Okay. I was wondering if he was just going to do, like, a weird 
mind games maneuver. But no, ZRK is actually starting to really stockpile resources. He hasn't gone back to build more production just yet. Yeah. Both players but, have uh, a pretty pretty substantial a, bank. Yeah. Not getting a third either. I don't really think he needs it. But oh, he's dropping out in the main base, and this is going to be really frustrating. Stalkers blink over, trying to do something about it. Too many, too many marauders. It's forced to fall back. The rest of the army from ZRQ comes up the ramp. Reaction is not quite fast enough. A storm does go down and is really hurting these units, but most of them are able to move out of the storm. And there's thinking to back it up. That's GG. GG. Good idea with the storm there. It just wasn't there in time, unfortunately. That would have been perfect if, if ZRQ had um, pushed up the ramp. You know, get that nice choke going. Uh, double storm it. Yeah, uh, zero Q takes game one. Uh, stim stim damage didn't really didn't really mean too much in that case. So. <laughs> oh wait, case was your bet involving your cat on the whole series or just this game? <laughs> 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 he, he bet his cat, I think, on zero Q losing. <laughs> And then made the justification. I hit my cat anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so next match is going to be on Vani Research Station. According to my notes here. Yep. Waiting on uh, Zero Q to get some water real fast. And we'll move right into the next one. So cool that that was pretty good. Um, I think the early blink kind of threw Gerthang off. I think he was a little indecisive. He didn't really move into a heavy macro play until too late. Yeah, yeah. a big part of that got to emphasize again was to just defend that. I think somewhat by luck. I don't know if he actually saw where the majority of the army was. I don't. I don't think he had like a marine out there scouting it or anything. Uh -huh. But he just expected him to go for that cliff face. I've just seen the Twilight Council. And he guessed completely correctly and just kind of shut that down. On the other hand, if he had walked up the ramp, he would have at least lost like three supply depots and a bunker. Unfortunately, I think there was too many defenses there for uh, for Grothang to have done much. He would have been able to run it down before he got to the command center for sure. Yeah, but... especially with, with Stim, he would have had a good good position there. Good thing would have been given him a black eye and then been able to run away. More or less unaffected. Right. So next map, Vani Research Station. I don't actually know much about these maps. This one's fun. <laughs> it's oh, got fun. golds everywhere. Fun. I'm scared when you say fun nowadays. <laughs> but yeah, it's got a gold on either side of the map as well as the one in the middle. Those sometimes come into play. It has very limited resources, so even if you were to see like an extended Swarm host game on this map, it can't really go past about an hour because the Protoss just runs out of money. <clears throat> Party. But, um... Charging across the map of life into his defenses and being ripped to shreds by them. It's a very kind of depressing thing to watch, that particular match. Mm -hmm. Yep. Player's ready to go. T minus two seconds here. Get to the loading screen. Come up with game two in this best of three. EVT. All right. But otherwise, uh, notable features of the map we will start to discuss in just a moment. <clears throat> In the bottom of the map, we have our blue Terran player. It is none other than ZRQ, KYVX. And at the top, spawning as the red Protoss player, it is Day Nine Ladder Clan's Girthang, his opponent. For anyone who wonders about the basis of Case's hatred towards ZRQ, we played an Imbaline game involving the projectiles that do painting explosions, and ZRQ decided to do Banshees. Banshees turn out to be the most broken thing next to Mutas in that game. And they come out before Muse. <laughs> so, uh... I think four Banshees with the Banling effect running over your base destroys it in about a minute? Oh, no. Maybe less. Maybe 30 seconds. That is... That's ridiculous. Yeah, and uh, he happened to pick Case's base first. <laughs> oh, Case man. Case doesn't let him forget this, even though it was like a 
a year and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was not here for this. I'm disappointed. Or you were on the other side of the map and just not aware of what's going maybe on. Maybe I maybe yeah, maybe I just screaming going on. You'd be like, what? <laughs> maybe okay. I just missed the whole thing. <laughs> um but yeah. In any case, uh, this map has a tucked-in natural, so you only have to defend the initial ramp going into the base. But it is fairly large, so it's good. Dro it's a good drop map if you're into that type of thing. Um, as Terran, or even to some extent as Protoss, the fourth and fifth are extremely far out. So while this might be the kind of map that you might like, uh, you know, if you can get to that place with Swarm Host as a Zerg player. Generally speaking, you don't really want to try that here because there's a lot of ways for you to die before you ever get to that point just because of how spread out everything is. Still, that said, uh, there are golds here, so there are fancy things you can do. You have a gold right above the tucked-in natural on either side and a gold in the middle of the map on the left side, and uh, that's the, the tucked-in natural is the back right corner. There you go. There you go. I found it. Yeah. Found it. Ooh. And then there's the one in the middle. And you'll sometimes see people go for fast third, go for thirds on those, even though they're kind of exposed. And there's a lot of interesting things that can happen here. Suffice to say. Yep. Then you got the vision blockers too near the mineral lines in these center expansions. It's kind of interesting. You play a little, little hide and seek in there. And uh, this this pro being relentless really wants to kill this SCV. He's been chasing him across the map now. You see, you don't really expect people to do this. Because in a lot of cases, the SCV runs back, it gets help, and Mike goes around, the probe dies. Sometimes people just leave it there and you forget. Like, you just come to expect it so much that you're not watching what's actually happening. And then, bam! The probe actually kills it off. Protoss feels great about it. Now, in this case, Protoss doesn't get to feel great about it. Reaper came out, rescued the SCV, <laughs> killed the probe, and now you're just kind of grinding your teeth a bit because you it could have been mining. Yeah. Very frustrating. And strangely enough for Girthing, it looks like we're seeing a uh, interesting setup here. I wonder if this is attempted secrecy or if he just likes building them on the edge. I don't know. Maybe an uh, organization thing. I can see that. Yeah, no, regardless, he's getting. He's going to three gates again, getting a stalker out. He could be setting up to go down the blink route again, actually. Or he might just go for a three gate aggressive play. Yep, Reaper's going to hop in here. Oh, uh -huh, well. Yeah, this is really, uh, this is one of those things where if he had anything sneaky in mind, he's probably abandoning it now, <laughs> because unless he kills this guy, he gets the Reaper. Oh man, the Reaper's not being controlled too great, he's gonna get away though, yep, yeah, just barely. Has one shot left, Stalker doesn't pursue him out into the map, he's gonna recharge up and probably come back, but he didn't actually see any of the tech really, yep. just gateways. Gonna use his uh, combat drugs, oh. almost lag lost his Reaper here. <laughs> Your Q's getting some lags. He really wants to be in the space to check now because there's a pause going on. And I'm going to tell you that first, this this is a pylon here in the top right. <laughs> this other building is a gateway. And I'll let you count the rest and do the math from there. Uh-oh, Syracuse having some internet problems. And we can give him a moment, a moment if he needs it. So. He said test. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I, I see your words. I see the words. I see the words. Okay. Well, anyway, while this is being worked out here, if you weren't grasping my overtly um, unnecessarily vague terms, he's going a four. He's four gating. <laughs> this is his flat out way of saying, "I expect you to screw up something early on. I'm going to kill you." And this is a strange map to do it on because there's a tiny ramp, so you expect him to be extremely well fortified. So uh, yeah, if ZRQ doesn't see this coming and makes the wrong choice in his build, whack, he's dead. If he makes the right choice in his build, Girthang will probably die. This is this is a very... Uh, this one's hard to make work if the other guy macroed right. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. 
Yeah, especially if he sees it too. I mean, he can prepare accordingly. Cancel his natural, you know, get those extra minerals back. Throw them into marines. Call it good. So. I have, I remember using this a lot in the silver, actually finding decent success with it. And then I got up to gold and people would just scan my base. And I'd be like, well, yeah. And then I would attack them and there would be two or three bunkers. <laughs> Unfortunately, these Yark Earthings making a couple other areas here. actually left a couple stalkers behind. Now, those guys coming across the map to get sighted, so we know some kind of aggressive play is coming. Doesn't know that it's Forgate just yet. He will if he sees a warp in happen. Yep. You'll notice that actually there is no forward pylon that has been built. This is actually going to slow this attack down. This can be fatal. It again comes down to how well Zyrku's done his build. <clears throat> yep, building up his defenses, dropping a bunker here. He's supply blocked. Worst time for this. Oh, uh, well. Even if it was. badly supply blocked, actually. Yeah, for a few seconds. <laughs> a few seconds could be everything. But uh, Zyrku's actually stockpiled a fair amount of gas. So he's. A little bit off his build, but not by too much. Girthang, keeping things, uh, keeping ahead and things. A lot of sentries here. I wonder if he's actually just going to try and uh, cut his army in half when he walks out. No, well, Syracuse lowering the spidey bow, teaching its mind, getting stim. And stim is how long? Of an upgrade. Hundred ish seconds. Mm. So less than that. More like a minute, isn't it? So yeah, it's something like that. I can't really see the ticker there because WCS 2.0 is awesome! Hey, it's wonderful! So I can't check the actual time. I don't have it memorized. Sorry about that. But, uh, yeah. In the meantime, though, Girthang is just building up. He's he's ready for this. Okay. This build he wants yeah. to work. He's going to move right up the ramp here. He's got high ground vision with the Mothership Core. He hits Guardian Shield. There it is. He's going to walk up here. This section does a decent amount of damage reduction for the army here. Uh, most of the forces concentrated in a single stalker at the front does take that out so far. It looks like this engagement is heavily, heavily failing Girthang. There is a bunker at the back here, but he's going to lose oh. Stim. That's not going to finish. And this first Marauder popping out here is going to be his face ripped off. Looks like ZRQ is seeing the loss of Stim. He's going to try to aggressively push forward. Time Warp goes down on the units, not able to pursue them back. He's going to try and take out a uh, Barracks series continuing to engage. Better concave for Girthang here. And he's just picking him apart. There is. Uh, this is actually looking really, really scary for ZRQ if uh, Girthing's able to stay on top of his warpins, continue to get reinforcements up here. But unfortunately, he's not really doing that, so the armies of both players are starting to kind of slow down and get a little bit smaller, but unfortunately now he's in the mineral line. He's starting to kill workers off. There is a Widow Mine out there, but it's too far away from the army to actually do anything. And uh, how many workers does he have left now? Well, 22 workers have died. Yep. ZRQ has 11 SCVs remaining getting absolutely gutted here. There's a bunker in the base now. Ooh. Picking up ooh, picking up okay. stalker by stalker. Thing Gert is though, I don't think Girthang is one just yet with this widow mine in place. It, there's a second one as well. He has to move forward over that and hope that he doesn't get hit by too many of them. He doesn't really hit well, okay, there's actually a problem here. You can walk around this defensive formation and kill the other command center. If you can pull that off, uh <laughs> it's gonna be curtains. Yeah, he's still Getting on top of his warp ins too, he just warped in a few more stalkers to replace the ones he lost. Dropping the reactor, these marines are not going to come out two at a time anymore. He's also picking off the production. I mean, yeah, he doesn't have anything but the uh, anything to detect the widow mines, but they, I don't think they can kill his stuff fast enough. He's just making more. Yep. And like you said, he's just going to waltz around here. Kill pick the, off the reactor. Have another three stalkers walking in. Okay, a little micro error. Three stalkers engaging a bunker with a marauder in it. Really a good time for the stalkers. He's pulling them away. Did lose one. And he's now in position to kill this widow mine as it pops out. Yep, there we go. Widow mine shots going off on the army. Oh, uh, he's not. He's got to hit that widow mine. He can't let that thing get in the ground. And he does. Zerk, he's actually taking so much damage, he can no longer produce units. He is supply blocked. Yep, supply block here. None of supply depots for this, even if he wanted to make some. And uh, I think her thing's got it. He's just going to chip everything down now. I mean, he can he can afford to just lose units wantonly with these uh, um, Widow Mines and just keep producing things, and he's good. So that's GG well played from ZRQ. Yep. And that's that. Your thing takes map two. Tying up the series here, 1-1. One, one. Okay, so 
that was ext- that was good. Uh, and unfortunately, that's the thing about the the four gate is if you make any simple errors like a supply block early on, it punishes you hard. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't and feel good. If you don't make that error, you probably hold it off. If you do make that error, you better hope you also did. <laughs> yep, yep. Got to be on top of your stuff versus a four gate. That thing, they hit hard, they hit fast. Eric, you're still having some uh, network trouble. So our last map, uh, when we get to, is going to be Expedition Lost. Should be a fairly interesting game. I think these two are actually pretty nicely matched up. Both, like, in the way they approach the game and their actual skill level. Yeah, it's a pretty good match. I think uh, I think they fit well together. Um, yeah. So here's the thing, right? Your thing likes laddering. ZRQ actually doesn't. They're in a very similar skill place as a result. <laughs> Despite that. <laughs> ZRQ just plays these games against the, the AI and he macros with a nice solid build. And he's reached what I would consider gold level at this point. Yeah, he's he's pretty darn near close to gold. If he were if he were to ladder regularly, yeah, easily. He's got the mechanics now. They both do. So uh, we're just doing some technical checking here. Yes, uh, right now it's using about a gig and a half of memory. C2. Yep, sounds about right. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Anti wants to, uh, also wants to play. Yeah. Thinking about what to do with that. Right now we have um, could have him play Monosaurus. Loopy Lou also needs a person to play against. Loopy is silver. Silver gold, one of those two. Memory is definitely functioning here. Friends list. <laughs> There's a way to check. <clears throat> Well, it is, in theory. I mean, if he plays on EU all the time, <laughs> which I think he does, it's not a way to check. <laughs> Loopy is gold now. He says it's gold. Yep. Okay. Uh, Anti is gold plat. Mont is plat. Case wants to know if Anti wants hummus. It's like, dude, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you meant that about the hummus or playing loopy. <laughs> He's getting now. If you do, uh, Antsy, it'll be tomorrow. We have a full schedule for this evening. So, uh, I mean, you guys can just play anyway. I'm not going to want to stop you. <laughs> just won't be on stream. In case says we're playing what? Could play hummus. You <laughs> could play hummus. <laughs> I don't know what game that is. It might just be you eat hummus with something, but uh, it's not really a game. It's a meal. <laughs> Snack. How does one play hummus? Uh, yeah, there's one more match this evening. It's actually starting in about 45 minutes. I don't remember who between who, actually. It's between Shadver and Ghost Gambit. Shadver and Ghost Gambit, okay. Their third series, according to this. Yep, best of five. Pretty nice thing to end the evening, huh? Oh, Case getting abusive in chat toward Anti. <laughs> Case, I thought you said you weren't playing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, but you're moving. <laughs> I have like a week. <laughs> uh, well, look, if you're if you're around, you can play. Don't don't let me stop you. <laughs> uh, 
There we go, lobby took a minute to spin up there. Oh, it's your first. I don't know why. I'm sorry. I don't know why I have a three there. Complete forgive me. For I have noted incorrectly. <laughs> I admit there's a part of me that's like, yay! Because <laughs> my coffee's running out. Oh, Ghost Gambit versus Shadvers only. Really? Well, yeah, because I, oh. I think they just finished playing other. So oh, of it's... course they did. Ghost Gambit was playing like. <laughs> <laughs> so it's crazy. your yeah. fault. You posted the three. I was like, oh, look, it's a best of five in the evening. And now it's not. I'm look, upset. Look, look. <laughs> Sometimes, look, I was having a good time. All right. <laughs> it's a quote fried dirt. <laughs> I was having a good time. <laughs> dirt, a.k.a. John, a.k.a. Fried Dirt, um, is somebody we play a lot of. A lot of heroes of the storm with, and that's what he'll say when somebody on our team is doing something we don't understand. He'll be like, "Look, look, he's having a good time. He's having a good time. Having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> he's having fun. That's what he's doing." Oh man, I'm so glad more people are getting heroes. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, me too. I'm also like, I'm vindicated by two things that I see with pe with people on the forums. First is there's a lot of people that play like a few games and then they go on there and they go like it will be better with items. Oh. These people never do this if they've played a hundred games or more. And then occasionally you'll get another guy who's like, actually, I came from League and this is amazing. Mm. This is fantastic. This is like everything I've wanted. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, cool. Yep, yep. That's how I was. Like, oh, this is such a nice, refreshing experience. And it really, so, really is. Um, obviously, though, the game's still being changed pretty heavily. Like, they, they moved a lot of the really damaging attack talents onto late game now, so games tend to go a little bit longer. But um, they're still experimenting with things. It is very much still in the beta in terms of how it actually plays. Oh, yeah, easily. It's uh, especially in the balancing. <laughs> uh, maybe in my mind it won't be released until Sylvanas is out. Yep. Even if they release it earlier, I'm like, nope, still beta. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm not that much of an undead fanboy. Uh. Anti, burn the heretic. Burn the heretic. <laughs> Heroes is not the game we're costing right now. In the top right of the map, <laughs> we have our blue Terran. Currently tied with his opponent one one. It is ZRQ KYVX. Yep. Zerk. Yep. Yep. Zerk. It is the mighty Zerk. Zerk. Out of the bottom left. Taking the last game in commanding fashion is Day Nine Ladder Clan's Gurthang. Spawning as a red Protoss. Okay. So this map, Expedition Lost, most notable feature is definitely the back door entrance to the main base, which you can see these rocks on here. Um, a lot of TBT matches, you'll see quick marine tank pushes that go up here. You'll see people try to blink over this. Yeah, you can see drops that'll end up over here just because of how much how wide the main is. Like this is, tends to be a center of attention in a lot of matches. I don't know, obviously, that they'll go for that this game though. But uh, we'll have to wait and see here. ZRQ hasn't flexed any aggressive muscles yet. Let's see if he might do that this game. Maybe. He's been sitting back, kind of, unfortunately, taking it uh, his last couple of games. He, I mean, for first game, it worked okay for him. He was able to defend that and then push back and totally turned it around. But last game, not, not so much. He uh, took a little too long getting getting a rolling start, and uh, Forgate did him in. So... Uh, maybe we'll see if he changes it up this game. Maybe not. He's expanding first. Doesn't look like he's going to open aggression. No. Nope. The thing, yeah, okay. So this is how he's varying things up. Usually with his builds, you'll notice he's very consistent. Barracks into a command center. Into more barracks. Into, you know. He's going for a more aggressive opening this time. I think he's trying He's trying to play Grithang a bit here. He's trying to say, I expect you not to do that again. I expect you not to forgive me a second time. 
and playing by that, it's going to go for the fastest man. Technically, you can hold up the four gate with this. Keep in mind, it's just harder. <laughs> it's like if, playing... he, if he goes for blink, you can't run all your army to the back and defend it. Yeah. It's like playing TVP in hard mode. You expand first. <laughs> oh no. That's that's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do it, personally. This is, however, intensely frustrating as a Protoss player. <laughs> What's happening right now? First of all, you'll notice the engineering bay being built in the expansion of the Protoss player. This may actually cause him to foregate when he sees it. Oh yeah. If he wants to be real, real mean about this, you just can't yeah, cancel it close to the end of its cycle, bring the SCV back, wait for him to have damaged it most of the way down, and then cancel it, get most of the money back. Uh, yep, this it this throws me into a four gate rage. I know. I know to me yeah, it does. It now the thing is, Gurthang's already got a proxy on the right side of the map, so I think he, we're going to see something else here. Perhaps DTs? Jeez, perhaps he did take both gases, so he's definitely working up to some tech play. Possibly invisible units. Yeah, possibly that, possibly oracles. Uh, they actually look almost identical at this point in the build. Except that he's chrono boosting out warp gates, so it's probably DTs. Oh, he's chronoing warp gate. Twilight Council going down yeah, on the proxy. DTs. This is definitely DTs. Uh, well, I guess it could be DTs or Blink still, technically. Oh, man. We were talking about DTs before the match. It has to be DTs. <laughs> Look, everybody has nightmares about invisible laser swords <laughs> slicing their stuff apart. Everybody does. If you play this, if you play this, you either you are either the guy that does it or you've experienced it. Even <laughs> then, you probably experienced it. My, my intestines. I can tell you for a fact that every time I tried to go DTs in this matchup, somehow my opponent did as well. It wasn't very fun. In, I don't know what I can say. In PvT? In PvP. Oh. I thought I said that, sorry. Interesting. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, Terran have DTs now. I'm just going to quit. Well, they do. Quit. They fly. I'm just going to quit StarCraft. They fly and they shoot rocks. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's a different experience, though. It's not the same. It's not the same as that invisible ninja guy walking they have, in face. They have turbines. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have flying units that actually throw DTs down at your <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> they die instantly. It's a horrible experience. They fire DT blades. <laughs> so there's a uh, Marine scouting on the edges of the map, being scouted by a probe that has dropped these oh, things down. Oh, your Q. Jiggy's going to find the DT shrine. Oh, clutch scout right here. And lucky him, his engineering bays are actually close to being done. Oh, my God. Engineering bay. I'm sorry, the second one will never be done. Oh, he's moving marines down oh, here. He hasn't closed this off yet. Is he gonna... He's trying to kill off these uh, buildings rather than go for the dark shrine. This is going to allow him more than enough time to warp in a couple of DTs. Oh, he he's got a stalker canceled back it. Here. He so, cancelled the dark, the Dark Shrine proxy. Uh, interesting. And then now he's going for Zealot Lakes. I'm not sure I like that very much. I think he might have actually been a little better off just straight going for it. Instead, he's going to try and hard switch in a Zealot Archon. He's even building a second Twilight Council, which I don't think he has to do because it doesn't look like CRQ cares enough to go do anything about this. He's doing that just in case. This is interesting. This fast switch here, it could work. I think he might find himself a little too strapped on gas, though, to really have enough Archons. Yep, you definitely need two bases for High Templars, at least. At least two bases. He knows this, he's dropping a Nexus. See if he can get it down in time before uh, ZRQ uh, amasses critical mass here. Uh, early Marines and Marauders, they don't feel good. They do not. By the way, for the, I know this is totally off topic, but I agree, Loopy Loo. I want to see Hearthstone here as a StarCraft. I know, right? Point. Right? Oh, he gets this. He's going to get speed. He's going to have it just barely. And Syracuse was a little faster about taking that out. He uh, would have totally stopped it. Yep, could have denied that. He's uh, pooling more Marines down there, so. He's getting. Oh, he's just going up to Storm, not even going to get Archons. This is actually a pretty good move. I think. Yep. If you can get it in time. Yep. He's definitely going to have it in time. This time ZRQ opted for the expand first. He's been using his minerals on uh, SCVs or not using them at all. And drop another command center as well. So, yeah. He'll definitely have Storm in time this time. He'll have a couple High Templars with, with enough energy. And uh, double Forge. Double upgrades. That'll help out too versus Terran Army. Especially, you know, I love... Yeah. 
I've I've heard a lot of different places. You should go armor versus Terran. Mm hmm But I like weapons versus Terran. I like to be able to stab Marines apart. Fast. I think it's one of those things where it depends on whether or not you're getting a lot of or you're getting um sentries as a core part of the build. Because where it's really good is it stacks with the sentry armor buff from gar um uh, guardian shield. Ah. That's why you would get it. If you if you're not getting the sentry and you're going something like Zealot Archon, it's probably actually better to get that. Or the Archon Shield upgrade, I guess. Yeah, I didn't think about that. I don't usually incorporate sentries into my play. I should be doing that. Yeah, if you're not, then yeah, you you're better. You are right to do that. Yeah. Because the uh, bonus isn't quite as significant. I think it's probably pretty similar either way, honestly. But uh, I know that's that's the reason that people would say that. It's just the synergy there. Synergy. Synergy. But yeah, Hearthstone, Heroes of Starcraft. I saw a mock-up somebody did for a while ago of what a Diablo-based board would look like. Oh, oh it's so pretty. I really want to see that at some point. And here's the thing. I know some people are going to be like, What they said, they'll never include anything else. Look, okay? I've been alive for a while. I've seen a lot of game companies come and go. Don't trust them if they say that. <laughs> <laughs> here's, the real, here's the real reality of the situation if they think it'll make money and they think in specifically in blizzard's case that it's a good idea then they'll do it they're gonna and then people will be like what you said before I'm like man eh, so is that's gonna be their response yep. and if we if we yap that with yeah loudly enough <laughs> if enough people are interested <laughs> and they run out of enough ideas because they very well might uh they could do that <laughs> yeah, ZRQ picking up a uh, proxy pile on there. Gurthang trying to get sneaky with the zealots. Didn't work out too well. Instead of uh, sending the zealots who are siding straight into the, the Terran army. Oh. Well, you know, he, he gets an idea of what's going on over here. Hopefully clicked on the units, found out about the upgrades. and uh... Oh, there isn't really much to work with there. 1-1 one, one coming out for Gurthang. It looks like this is going to hit before that is done. Let's have... Uh, plus one already on ZRQ's armor. Army, he's going to be getting plus one armor. He might actually delay this attack until that's ready. Or not attack. Maybe he's just posturing out in the middle of the map here. This, however, is exactly what uh, Gurthang wants him to do. He's got about two, three storms built up. All he has to do is get him to get trapped on the ramp. Everything dies. Oh, yeah. I've, I've won from this position before. If you have a sentry or two with you, and they look away from their army for one second. All the all the units try to like smash together into the force fields, and they all die. It's great. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely potential. You could easily do it. Archons are no joke, man. That extra bonus damage to bios. Oh, it's so painful. Zero Q splitting his army. Look, come in. Except in that one map with the siege tanks and wings of liberty when they're like no oh, gods no the real reason you want that laser cannon is because you got freaking colossus and immortals are gonna blow up all your crap <laughs> yes that's what you laser bang laser beam down because you very quickly realize that the archons are not a threat at all <laughs> that's why <laughs> yes that's why you laser bang them <laughs> laser bang laser bang them <laughs> okay so all of the dark all of the uh dark high templar twilight templar <laughs> are uh floating over here <laughs> A little bit of Tassadars are floating up into the left. <laughs> yep. Players poised for uh, uh, bracing for impact here. Gurthang moving out. I don't like this idea. He's moving outside of his base. He needs to be at the top of that ramp. Zero Q is going to have the. Where did my star port go? <laughs> well, um. ZRQ, your starport is located in the back left of your main base. Ooh, Gurthang pushing in. He Gurthang's thinks he can take this bad down. idea, buddy. Well, he doesn't have to take it as much as he just has to... Uh, he's trying to get that money storm. He can do that. Oh, he can definitely do that. Found it. Found it good. I'm glad you found it, buddy. Oh, this is totally... Oh, oh no, he stormed his own units. units. No, no, no. Oh. What, he has, what he really wants to do here... Oh, Ooh. holy Crap, it did a lot of damage. So okay. good. Zealot legs. Uh, Gurthang is still kind of behind the supply, but most of that supply is not here, so he's fine. Oh, snap. Oh, uh, oh, it's beautiful. Archon's moving in. Splash uh, damage. Oh, 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 oh. Cleaned it all up. 
Evening out the army supply. Now, Zero Q does have a very strong macro bone to back this up. <laughs> but uh, you'll notice that he's already got his third out. He's got a fourth command center. He's got a lot of mules down. He's bringing in a lot of minerals. He's starting to build more barracks up so he can actually produce all this. What he needs on top of this is ghosts. He needs some way to deal with those storms because just a huge flood of marines is not very good against this. Yep. Yep, not just for the energy burn, but uh, definitely for the shields too. These archons, these are going to be a huge problem if there's enough of them. But he has ZRQ Army number two is coming out here. Still ahead in supply a little bit. And uh, Gerthang is off on the right side of the map. This could turn into a base trade scenario. I don't really think Gerthang wants that. No, he doesn't. Dropships are going to bypass these rocks. So double upgrades. Oh, no, the upgrades. The upgrades are going to probably finish, actually. Nope. Oh, he's going to get the armor upgrade. Nope. No. Oh, plus Jeez, oh, man. Oh, wow. denied. Oh, what? That's okay, terrible. Did. Yeah, he denied both of them. What? Oh, and he recalled back home. Oh, oh. Man, if that had happened before the fight had occurred. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was... That was painful. Snipe so both of them. Um, some zealots is warping in front of the army for some reason. Oh, those are going to run home. Because they're like, no. Changed his mind real fast. Gathering up here at the top of the ramp. Supply blocked again. These proxy pylons going down. Got a plan for those. Zerku still has one full medevac. This is I don't know if he realizes that's happening. It's so easy to do if you're markering a Terran army around. Uh, Which, yep. Like... Suddenly, ten supplies gone. You go, what? <laughs> Where to go? Cut a I say that mostly of experience with of liberty because that actually I, I never use them I use medics because <laughs> I like swear at my computer when I accidentally load everything onto the medevacs when I don't want to and die <sighs> those two marines in there that would really like to be dropped out of the medevac <laughs> it's burning oh, he's found the reinforcements and he's just running out and killing those it's extremely frustrating for ZRQ but he's starting to do the same in the back of his army no everything is clustered up he hits it at the storm, hits a couple of the medevacs, kills one of them in the process. There's still all of this army that's up there, but he's actually getting sandwiched between the two. Balls of marines, moving back to deal with those. Oh, he kills one of the storm uh, bearing High Templar. Another one is actually in play. Most of the High Templars that he's managed to kill don't actually have enough energy to do anything. Another storm comes out. He still has some more left, and uh, zirku has got to leave. Got to leave. Scary. You know, he's got 50 more, 60 more supply than the other person. Wow. Those oh, storms. No. Okay. Marauder's just going to take it in the face. Or it'll be fine. Uh, so, guys, kill me. I want to die. Thank you. <laughs> My family! ZRQ going to pull around. He's going to go straight for the main base again. There are cannons here. <laughs> these these upgrades. Uh-oh. He's like, no. I'm just <laughs> dying. Oh, no. These upgrades could get denied again. I don't think he's going to go for the upgrades. I think he's just going to rip out the core in these gateways. Oh, he's chrono boosting him. He wants those done this time. Oh, that's frustrating. But he can still make High Templar. High Templar and Zealots. Which is kind of all he needs for this composition. Uh oh. Oh, no! Oh, good. Wow. All his marauders nearly died. He's like, I'm gonna drop them out. Heal everybody up. <laughs> the army of uh, Girthangs made it to the other side of the map. Oh, it's been sighted by the Metavax. Yep. Army out front goes, oh crap! They're running home as fast as possible. But, uh, yeah, he's got some nasties waiting for him at the top of the ramp. Yeah, Zeracu's replenishment rate is simply too high here. He's, uh, he keeps doing a lot of damage with the storms, but it's just barely not enough, I think, here. Zeracu keeps reloading his, uh, weapons far too quickly. He still has a lot of storms here, so he's gonna survive. I think this army should get out of here. Yeah, in general, with Storm, you kind of, if possible, want to be pursued with it, rather than the one pursuing. Yeah, you definitely want defensive Storms. They walk yeah, into it. Yeah, here it goes. Mm. One more. Drop it, buddy. Drop it, buddy. Nope. Oh, okay. shoot. It's 80 energy. Do you not have enough? Yeah, it's 80. Yeah, it's 85. 
but could be ready in a few seconds as long as he can uh, get him choked up. But I think he just wants to not die. At this yeah, point. at this point, his macro is far below ZRQ's. I mean, ZRQ's got one, two, three, four, five, ZRQ. five bases. Yeah, he's actually doing something that's backfiring a bit right now, and that's he's gone up to 84 workers with seven mules. So that's a lot of resources, but his army is actually slightly smaller than it should be. And if Girthang can build up enough, now that he's actually reached a third base, he'll, he'll be able to kill most of what Zero Q can throw at him. Oh yeah. Especially if he keeps loading him up into Menavax, he gets a good pick off. That's the end of that. Well, okay. On the other hand, there is this. And that's this map, everything's so spread out. The Zealot Archon army isn't really that great at dealing with drops. And uh, five Menavax can still drop on some games. It's not great, but he can Ooh, money storms again. Oh, man. All these marines going down. But uh, in the main base of Girthang, got a drop. Yeah, nothing to deal with this back home either. There's no Is he army. Call back there? Does he have a mothership core? Did he not rebuild it? Uh oh. He's got to uh -oh. run as fast as he can. It's not going to be fast enough. I'm not having that mothership core. It's pretty key <laughs> to surviving this. I, again, I think in a lot of ways, ZRQ really only needed one good fight. He would do a lot of damage to production. He should have been, been fine from there. I don't necessarily say this is exactly over just yet, as he hasn't strictly killed Girthang's army just yet. But uh, prospects are looking grim for our Protoss player. Yep, not looking good. Not looking good here. One Marauder. <laughs> Probe's trying to take him down. He's in the choke point. But uh, <laughs> the Zealot finally gets to him. <laughs> yep, Girthang hurting. All, most of his production is gone. His uh, natural is mining out. He's only got his third base left, so he's effectively two base economy. Versus zero Q's five. Um, and two, three, four, five fight Templar. Small ball of zealots. He needs miracle storms to not lose this army. Miracle storms, yes. Okay, he's gonna try and move around the high Templar. Getting a bit, um, bit behind the army. He's catching back up. And this is like such a small army. You look at it. It's like it's a hundred supply down, Omega. How can you say he still has a chance, dude? It storms. They're good man. Like really good. Ooh, Especially if your opponent keeps walking into him. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, oh, gets one medevac's worth of uh, marines in there. Ten supply immediately disappearing. Feedbacking the rest, actually oh. killing a lot of it. For some reason, the archon lets him go. No. Uh, comes back in order to fight the rest of the army. Storms start coming down. Um, Storming the wrong stuff here. Uh, okay. Goes hit off a nice storm there. Holy crap, so much stuff dies. Oh. But despite that 40 supply chunk of damage done to ZRQ's army, Girthang doesn't really have the ability to rebuild a lot of that. Yep. So ZRQ is going to get right on back up to 200 supply here shortly. And we got a crisis in the main of the Protoss. Yep, pulling the boys. Boys can't do much against Stim Marines, unfortunately. There's not going to be a whole lot left for Girthang. His his supply is plummeting. Zero army, 34 workers left. He's He's got his hands tied. It's not too much. Not too much available left to do. Maybe just slowly picking off gateways. This is all he's got. Yeah, he's going to try and rebuild as much production as he can. He doesn't have tech, though. Now, tech is the big problem here. Zealots aren't necessarily going get to him, get him out of this situation. Um, a single Archon that could shoot at those might, because that is the most... Those those medvacs are dead. They are... Look, if this battle went on long enough, oh. they would actually just crash. They're that badly damaged. <laughs> and victory goes to CRQ. Taking the best of three. <clears throat> Two, one. Man, if that Archon had gotten off one more laser, that would have that would have turned out a little different. <laughs> and I think ultimately he still had the ability to rebuild his army where his opponent didn't. Yeah. So I think if that was a really big part of it. Just, uh, but man, that was a good fight. Very good game. Yeah, very good game.
Okay, welcome back. Hello, hello. We'll get started when ZRQ returns to the Skypes. Give him a moment to uh, alt tab. <laughs> now his computer was doing weird things before, so I'm not too surprised. Yeah. Take a little bit. Well. Ah. So for anybody who's going to be sticking around, we have Shadow versus Ghost Gambit coming up in about 20 minutes. After this match, that'll be it for the evening. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, Anti Citizen versus Kesura. We just have to figure out when that's occurring. I'm assuming it's either 4 p.m. PST or 7. Judging that Death Row versus Probe is at 5. 7 probably will better up the schedule then. But we'll see about the two players later. Anyway, we have Mr. ZRQ. So, welcome back. Okay. Congratulations, Congratulations, sir. sir. Oh. <laughs> Zero Q sounds, sounds relaxed. Very stressed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the opposite. Exactly. Well, gentlemen, first of all, thank you very much, uh, both of you, for playing. And we have three maps to talk about. First one is Inferno Pools. Zero Q, why don't you start us off? Tell us a little about how this game went from your perspective, and then we'll turn it over to Gertang. Uh, I had a feeling to expect Blink, uh, Blink Stalkers to the back, so I think I had enough buildup of troops in the bunker at the front I thought I might have held. Mm -hmm. And I think after that it's just Snowball, maybe? Yeah. I haven't watched the replay yet, I wouldn't know. Gertang? Mm -hmm. Well... well you see, I may or may not have been trying to go DTs on that map originally. Oh. Uh. <laughs> you know that, that little spot outside of the the main base that goes to your third? I like putting proxy buildings there on the unused bases. So that pylon that he scouted with the Reaper and mm. the robe, I was going to put things there. <laughs> that was what I messed up on. And he stopped me from doing that by killing the probe before it got around. I don't know why I decided to put the pylon on top and the buildings on the bottom. <laughs> but for whatever reason, I was going to do that. It's like, oh, that's interesting. Let's do that. Um, so, yeah, that didn't work. And then I went for Blink, forgetting that I don't have the APM to make Blink useful. Oh, whoops. <laughs> There's a story behind that, because... Um, somehow I scouted top left first, and then I didn't think there was a base there, and I scouted all the other base, and somehow concluded that you were in the bottom right with the reaper. Hey. And then that's when the dang, I, you know, I failed the scouting portion of this game. Oh, embarrassing. Because uh, that's uh, the entered the base and spotted some building, and apparently I missed it on a mini-map altogether. Oh, uh, um, so it's so essentially it's, just a result of a strange error. Yes. It was a big accident. That's an odd. That's interesting. Well, there you go. And sometimes stuff like that happens. But um, game number two went a little bit differently. We had Vani Research Station. Gurthang was able to take that one. So why don't you tell us about this game from your perspective? Well, four gate. <laughs> Lee? Um, <laughs> is there really much more to say about it? After the first game, it was like, well... We couldn't get away with doing anything really micro-intensive or really, uh, you know, you need, I needed something a little more solid, no, no cheesy nonsense, so I went for something that usually works. Four gates rarely fail me, so four gate it was. And it didn't fail here. No, no it didn't. <laughs> so what happened, Zero Q? It looked like you had almost enough stuff to hold it off. Uh, I don't know when I noticed I didn't have a second command center and I had no minerals at some point. And I'm like, I don't know. The, the whole thing fell apart and I started lagging. I'm like, Ugh. uh, 
worst map ever. Yeah, that can mm -hmm. happen. Um, yeah. Four gate's definitely one of those builds that it, it's it's powerful if the person makes any kind of errors early on, or if they're getting hit with anything that messes up their build. It punishes it hard. But, um, yeah. I only knew about it when I saw the stalk stalkers crossing the map with the Reaper, I think it was. And then one bunker went down. Not enough. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, then. Um, but yeah, that is, that is a pretty straightforward game otherwise. So let's talk about Expedition Lost. This one went on quite a bit longer. Zero Q. Uh, CC first. I think he scouted it, too. I did. And then somehow... I don't know why. I saw the probe, and I never saw the probe reach my base. So somewhere it clicked. I should check for proxies, because this is Protoss we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I... Gee. Feel, lo and behold. It's a DT build. Unfortunately, I didn't see that the DT shrine got cancelled, so I didn't cancel the turret. But ah. there was one turret. And then I was stormed to oblivion. <laughs> yes, yes, frequently it kind of turned into an endurance match from there. How hard you can hold your A key. Thank you, Taryn. <laughs> I don't know. Try try stuff with my metafacts, and I think they just got all fed back. Actually, I think fate, fate, feedback had to actually hit the unit, right? Like, actually click it in order for it to work? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that was very. It's significantly friend. trickier than Storm in terms of landing it where you want it. Yeah, Granted, right. when there's like eight medevacs, you just kind of click in the general vicinity and hope you hit the right ones at my level anyway. Just You just you just click towards them and hope that you hit the right ones. Or all of them, preferably. Yes. Um, so I had a bunch of medevacs running around with no health, all in red or something. One stalker to kill them all. Yeah, there was actually one point where a Archon a maybe annihilated core. all of them. <laughs> oh yeah, that's exactly why I targeted Cybercore. I was like, no stalkers, please. And I never rebuilt it. <laughs> Although Archons would have done the same thing, though. Yeah. yeah. And then I discovered that I couldn't rebuild my Templar archives because I didn't have a Cybercore and I yep. didn't have a Twilight Council because you gutted my main base. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've never been associated with like a drop Terran, so I'm like, I don't know how any of that works. Mm -hmm. It's odd. It, 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 it's my least favorite thing to play against is Terrans that know how to utilize drop. I'm a terrible multitasker, so if you put two large forces on two opposite sides of the map that both are threatening me, I usually just pick one and hope the other one doesn't kill me. It oh yeah, that's, yeah. That's when the other half of the troops got stormed to oblivion as well. Saw them at the bottom of the ramp and it's a little oh, yeah. half, half the army go. Okay. Well, um I think okay. that pretty much wraps that up. So we've got another match in ten minutes, so not too much time here, but if you have any comments you'd like to throw out there, zero, we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll get rid of the next game. Uh no, I have none, actually. Very, very straightforward again. <laughs> you guys are pretty good. I like the storms last game. That was that was awesome. Those storms were were pretty sick. If uh, if you had enough production to um, yeah. to swing back, that would have been it killed me. I didn't have enough gateways. Yeah. I just I couldn't. I stormed the army, killed the army, but then I couldn't rebuild an army fast enough to do anything with that lead. Yeah. It would have been totally sick, and and just that. Uh, <laughs> those medevacs only had like five HP apiece. One Archon shot would have taken out that entire <laughs> entire group of <laughs> of ships. So, but uh, it was it was very close. You guys you guys are pretty evenly matched. You took it out to a three game series. So, Looking I liked it. To yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm uh -oh. excited. Revenge looks like it's on the horizon. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Well, with that out of the way, I would like to thank everybody for watching this evening. Once again, there's another match in just about 10 minutes. So we're going to take a quick five minute break and catch you guys back for that. Yep, see you soon. Thanks for playing. Thanks for having me on. Hey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.